we are here discussing <laughs> Rick and Morty episode discussion, season five, episode one. More dinner, Rick Andre. We wanted to basically, how do we encapsulate what's amazing about Reddit and their episode discussions and put it into like a video format? We could just talk and go through the episode and discuss it. Yeah, and this and is talk new about for the us. nonsense. This is the first time we've done something like this. Yes, it is. Mm. But I've been really looking forward to it because these shows provide not just entertainment, but they also provide and like humor, but they also provide like intellectually stimulating, thought provoking things. I agree completely. Yes. That I would love to tap into. So, man, we're going to go through, we're going to, uh, I screen grab the episode and we're going to go through the episode and analyze it, dissect it, just talk about it. Okay. So, I love this episode. I think yeah. this is such a great way to start. I can imagine, like, imagine if you're the first time you're watching this, you've never seen Rick and Morty. This is a strong damn start, um, whether you're yeah. a fan or not. It ticks so many boxes. It was creative. It was humorous. It was. It had really interesting new characters. What's your initial feeling and thought? My initial feeling was definitely mostly just the humor like uh, i just missed that kind of humor the very i guess off the cuff uh pretty straight up sometimes quite random uh bizarre but everything stems from a place of either pop culture or just like a relation to the people that have, that have made this that they find humorous like for example the uh one about nintendo 69 oh, where he just like turns on the tv and the, and the nintendo 69 is wearing a g-string <laughs> and it's like going hard and then later on in the episode uh, Rick brings back the joke saying like, all I do is eat ass and 69 Nintendos, bro. Oh, it's so good. Let's so just like, just little things like, anyways, like that, that's just like an example of the way they go about their humor and how it works. So well. It's so good. Let's go through it. All right. We're going to go through the episode. We're going to like, okay. So we start yeah. here in like this kind of, they've just finished some type of adventure and look at all, you see all these little Straight crystals. And yeah. I think I, I've been reading, it's like, I think this is a good example of like maybe how the writers think about what story we're going to pick for Rick and Morty. You have all these different potential mm. adventures and, you know, I don't know, can you see, like, can you make out some of these, there's a, there's a baby Rick. Yeah. And they go past one where there's like the blade, there's like the blade version of them. Right. And I, th I think you're right. I think these are all ideas they have and maybe they're just really baked and then just come out with stuff. They're just like, oh, I don't think that would work for an episode, but just chuck it in for here. Like, they're just like, I like the way you think about that. Like the start of the episode is them kind of choosing what dimension of Rick and Morty they want to go into to explore. And as you can see, they choose the one with the, uh, I think his name is Mr. Nimbus because I don't know if he said it enough, but I I'm pretty sure it's Mr. Nimbus. <laughs> I mean, look here. You see, like, uh, you see a lumberjack Rick in the cor in the top right corner. Yeah. Um. And you see, I I really think it's interesting. Oh, here's another one. Oh, yeah, that they're, they're just moving. Um, hmm. I th there's one with Rick fighting. It looks like a vampire. Um, kind of maybe like a Blade movie. I think that's kind of an ode to Blade. <laughs> uh, and I think it's interesting. Oh, it is obviously my bad. He says it. There's a what is that Washington? Like an American history one. I think it's interesting how we start off where Morty is essentially saving Rick. Rick is like the helpless one here. This episode yes. gave me like Rick's vulnerable. He's like, I'm a silly man. I'm a silly small man. What have I done? I think there's a transition happening in character development and a role reversal where Morty is taking more control, being more assertive. And Rick is becoming almost weaker and going more into like Morty's previous character yeah and it's just straight off the bat at the start of the episode and even following it up like as the episode progresses you see rick think he's in control and mention to mr nimbus that like he doesn't need him like he's just an excuse but then you kind of see mr nimbus save him so it's once again rick is it's just proving that he's not as strong as he once was he's not as powerful he's quite he's a lot more vulnerable and weaker than he would like to think he is right and i think that's a bit of an identity conflict that He's potentially having that will may, maybe get explored further throughout the show. So more crystals. If you just got, you can see different versions of Rick and Morty. They're coming home, and Morty's trying to save the day, right? Which is the usually the opposite. And he's being assertive here. And then they're about to crash land, and Morty's about to give up on everything. He's about to give up on life, right? 
oh, we're dead. Whatever. There's unlimited Mortys. And then he gets a call from Jessica. And it's like... Oh, no, he calls Jessica. Oh, my bad. Oh, that's right. And it's like she almost gives him something to live for. And do you remember the line that she said that being nervous is selfish? Yeah, I love that line. It's great. That, and then that, Morty's just like, oh, wait, what? <laughs> but like, is there some truth to that? No. I mean, there probably is a bit of... You need context. It's truthful when there's context based around it. If it's just like in general with no context attached to it, I'd say no. I think there's nothing wrong with being nervous. It's just a, it's just a human emotion. I guess individually as an emotion, you shouldn't maybe judge it, but hmm. how nervousness can impact your ability to help others, to work with others, to mm. what Morty is, is like not see the love of his life. I do think that her saying it just shows more about what type of character she is because that's the way she perceives things. So it's a smart line for that. Well, do you notice, I noticed like, you remember like she wanted, like the little things in the background, you notice like the medical thing on the, on, that's the symbol for a medical mm -hmm. symbol. Like she wants to work in hospice. I remember she crossed out the mm -hmm. thing of her boy, previous boyfriend. Like, yep. you don't notice these things unless you pause it, right? Exactly. Like their attention to detail is great. And the, like the, they went hard with the, with this episode, because as you'll see later on with the, 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 the different characters, the three dimension, they go through so many different timelines or progression. That's, that's so many like scene changing, but so much more creativity. So like they, they really created a lot on this episode. They did. It was so many layers to it that kept it so engaging and so mm. they organized a date and rip and morty just like oh yeah let's i'll get my shit together now and save us and you were thinking like oh you landed in the ocean morty like rick always says something about morty right like why is landing in the ocean a problem well i know it's so it's so amazing because like and he he doesn't even mention to morty once in this episode thank you for saving me because rick's not even aware that he was saved right yeah it's a very rick thing to do like it's, it's, <laughs> it's almost like an assumption like of course do you mean the ocean on earth and then yeah <laughs> and then who pops out of the water yeah, the, the fact oh man this guy i love when he comes up it's richard Mr. Nimbus. And they call him Richard, which is interesting. We've never heard any character, I'd think, call uh, Rick by his full name. They must have been nemesises for a long time. I think it's pretty obvious they were friends before they were nemesis. Because you can see, you know, throughout the episode progression of Mr. Nimbus warming up to Rick. But then you see Summer with the seashell and then it goes back to them hating each other. Yeah. But you know what? I read something interesting. Uh, by the creators. I watched this little two-minute video on um, on Adult Swim. And mm. according to the writers, Mr. Nimbus has been a favorite character of theirs and they've been wanting to introduce him for a long time. He was originally meant to appear in an early episode, but it was scrapped. But he's described mm. as the antithesis to Rick. Mr. Nimbus is Rick's mm. opposite. In fact, that he's happy with his life. He knows he's the king of the ocean. He controls the cops. And believes these accomplishments are enough to be satisfied. <laughs> That's right. He's uh, he's Mr. Nimbus. He controls the police. <laughs> he does with that. Uh... I love how, I love how Rick says it. A uh, Jerry, as if like it's common knowledge. And at the very end of the episode, yeah, Jerry says it like it's common knowledge. <laughs> That's how he finishes. <laughs> such, a, such a Jerry thing. Oh, we love. Um, they did a new intro sequence. I don't know if you yeah. noticed. That's new, new, isn't it? Yes, that was. I, so I assume this is forthcoming episodes that we're going to see here. Not necessarily because in the intros, in the previous intros, some of the stuff in the intro is for episodes and then some of it has nothing to do with episodes. So you never really know. Have like, we do you remember this thing, the Cthulhu? I don't. Have no, we ever seen it? been an episode. But that's been, that's it has the a only name. Thing that's been in every intro. Cthulhu? Yeah, it's, the, yeah, it's definitely Cthulhu. What's, what's Cthulhu that? is like the, the tentacle, like the tentacle monster. It's like the Kraken in a way. Kraken of the skies, you could say. So, okay. Of the, of the water, but yeah. Well, I think... Okay, so then he's like, all right, he's preparing... He uses a napkin to prepare a, shell, a shape of, shell, of a shell for <laughs> Mr. Nimbus. Obviously, Nick wants to impress this guy. Yeah, he does. Like, you can tell that, like, he respects him. He may 
talk about how much he hates him, but it's pretty obvious. I think that, like you know, look at the look at the the effort Rick's going to getting the wine ready for him. He's aging it for hundreds of years just for this person. You're right. Like, like Rick's the sort of person that hides certain things, but to me, it's pretty obvious that he cares a lot about this Mister Nimbus. So the question is why? Because we didn't really get to see that type of development or understanding why. Mm. It's the same with um kind of bird person as well with bird person. You know, they, he was kind of a bit of a dick to him, but it was pretty clear that he cared a lot as well. Do you see who's on the wall there? Yeah, that's Mr. S- Mr. Snowball. Not Snowball. Was that his name? It's uh, Snuffles? Mr. Snuffles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's it. Just more things that you don't notice. Yeah, I love all those little... Those little. That was a great episode. That was, a, that was episode two. Do you know Rick and Morty's eight years old, bro? Is it? See, they had a break. Well, I, I looked... For a while, yeah. but you're telling me it released my cats. My cats, yeah, eight years ago. Your cats. I'm fairly sure it's it's nearly eight years old. Well, my cat's seven seven and a half years old, and I named my cat after the second episode. So, and you would like you watched it when it came years. out? Yeah, man. As soon as it dropped out, because I, I was a big fan of Dan Harmon. So as soon as this dropped, I was onto it. And I just happened to get a cat at the time. I watched I was I watched the very first episodes, and I was like, "Fuck yeah, Morty is a great name." I like that. I like, I mean, I know that, but now people know that. Obviously, this is a show you love and that I, thanks to you, grow to love. Um, and Summer here, I just think it's like, character again, character development. Summer being this naive, young, like impressionable girl. Now she's going and diving in the Mariana Trench, getting seashells for Rick. Sum- Summer's character development's great. She's great. And this one of my favorite lines of the episode <laughs> let's lick tits. Let's lick tits. It's like everyone's oh, but get- they're just like, oh wait, what? But it's all right. They watch pornography, bro. It's all good. Uh, and then, and you know, it's interesting. Usually, uh, Morty and parents, and Summer's parents, are usually at odds with one another. But now it seems like they're yeah, almost making amends in ways we haven't seen. Most definitely. And I, I kind of like that that's a direction they're taking because it's been a long time since it's been like that. But also the fact that like you can tell that when they're both talking to each other, they're doing it more for themselves than for each other. If you pick that up, like you can tell because they're always kind of second guessing their decisions and making sure that their other person's okay with it. But it's more so for themselves as well. Yeah. Like the, oh, that's the question they decision. ask at the end as well, right? Is that what you're referring to? Like at the end credits, they're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But there's still a massive. Yeah, it's still so a massive. Sure. Okay. So now, now shit gets real. Because all right, Rick's like, nah, I'm not gonna go 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 buy some alcohol that's aged. I'm gonna create a time portal to potentially another dimension, and it's just gonna age there. Now, little does and I think he mentions that this. Oh, sorry, I was gonna say I think he mentions that this wine's made from whales' butts as well. Oh, it is. Oh, no wonder you can't get that from the store. I think I think that's. Oh, yeah, I think that's why he did it himself because it's like he's that's the that's the effort he's going towards, Mister Nimbus. He needs to have it perfect for him. T- just toss this whale ass ocean wine in here, whale ass ocean. Age it up for a few centuries. Time moves faster in there. This is a great line, by the way. Which one? I'm not a beaver who believes in Jesus Christ, Morty. Because if you've watched the uh, the OG. Uh, Narnia movies, then there's these giant fucking beavers that yeah, oh, pretty much nice. believe in Jesus. So I didn't a, know a, that. It's a pretty accurate. And even the title of the episode, Mort Dinner Rick Andre, is a reference to uh, a play on words to a, a movie. I'm not sure if you're familiar. I haven't seen the movie. Uh, what was the name of the episode again? Mort Dinner Rick Andre. No, I don't know. Basically, the reference is to a movie, and the movie has meaning to this episode with what the movie's about. Mm. I can't speak on it much further than that, but I'm sure people can comment below, and they can tell us. Oh, yeah. Like, we're going to pick up things we recognize. Other people are going to pick up stuff they recognize. Mm. So, apparently, Morty hasn't been to uh, school in years, yeah, as Rick, expected. <laughs> Rick fucks him over. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Morty's just losing. I don't know. Shit. I don't know shit, Rick. How many enemies do you have? But this is this is an important point I think Morty's trying to make. Uh, and Rick tries to teach him. Life is a fight. He's an ice cold dick killer, which is another one of my favorite lines. 
Mm-hmm. Put that on a t-shirt. I also, I also think it's uh, really good to notice that Morty is slowly becoming more like Rick as well in this episode. Like the way that he's now a bit more argumentative and less, and less, less submissive. Things. Yeah, exactly. And even like he's he's a bit more like. Uh, I don't know what the word is. He's just a bit more active with his decision making and not really caring so much at the consequences because his anger is driving him. A very Rick trait. So you see Morty in this episode becoming more and more like Rick. And I think we'll see Rick probably confront this later on in this season or another season and realize his yeah. mistake. That's, that's some good foreshadowing. Mm. Uh, because you can see how he's tunnel vision for like... He's tunnel vision for getting this wine. Mm-hmm. Like blocked his ability to see that he was interfering with an entire civilization and that all got centered around him. He was just so mm. tunnel visioned. So then you get the luxurious Mr. Nimbus. Oh, I love this entrance. The water just like goes on him like cum, just like dripping down him. Oh, Jesus. Yep. That's that, it, that's, that, yeah. That, that's, that's the image you get. It's so good. It's such a great entrance. And just the, the horns, it's just so... It's so cartoon. So, I think... Is this another play on, like, another superhero? Like, an Aquaman type guy? Mm, is there any superheroes that, I, I that... I think, actually, yes. Do you know? You could say Poseidon, the Greek god, Aquaman, like you said. I think it, it, it is a kind of kind of a take on Aquaman because Aquaman's always kind of like the joke hero because like who gives a fuck about controlling the ocean because no one goes there anyway you, you know like it's such like a so yeah and also the deep from uh uh from the boys like the deep's kind of like the the joke character I haven't seen like, that do you so, recommend that show the boys oh my fucking god yes really it's probably like oh bro it's so fucking good it's amazing it's incredible you holy shit it's, you'll probably I'll, I'll be honest with you it's that good you'll probably want to review that shit as well oh boy oh boy boy oh boy oh boy it's it's fuego. awesome man i heard it recommended by another friend of mine so mm. i will uh i'm gonna look into it now it's um incredible. and look if anybody is communicating with you while they're stretching with their half dick hanging out i'm skeptical and be wary and mr nimbus is all over that he's doing a half a doctor lunge stretch while he's making points and you'll notice that every time Mr. Nimbus uses his powers, he yeah. always fucking thrusts. He you thrusts. See his, you see his dick move. It's fucking great. It's, <laughs> and he's all... He's like, he's like, it looks like he's got a bit of snake eyes. Like, I know he came in with snakes, so maybe he's like a uh, half... Oh, yeah. He's definitely half ocean. Quarter snake. Well, that's the ocean thing is interesting. Like, you know how Rick's thing is space. Mm-hmm. Rick is a master of space. And science. But... The rival to Rick is someone who owns the ocean. Mm -hmm. Both space and the ocean are unexplored, dangerous for humans. They're Mm. confusing and complex. So I think Mm, there's a polarity there that I read that I think fits well with like Rick being the opposite to Nimbus. Yeah, I think so. It's a good pickup. So (laughs) I love this bit. This is where Nimbus really gets to flex his muscles his powers yeah his he powers the police this bit is amazing <laughs> fight and he says it so nonchalantly what's next oh fuck <laughs> <laughs> it's so good flee triple f and fight, they out of there he's mis- and then- uh, yeah and that's a great setup for the part of the joke at the it's end it's really good it's it's very well done and Jerry's like, of course, Jerry's in a Jerry situation where he knows something. He doesn't know something that everyone else knows. <laughs> Jessica. Oh, yeah. I just saw some police having sex. Is this the right house? Of course it is. Of so course it is. And, and she really makes some changes. Uh, so, yeah. Then they, then they set up. Oh, yeah. We watch porn together. They're trying to set up some uh, foreshadowing to a, to a threesome. And what the hell is this thing? It's a starfish. Oh, it is. There you go. Yeah, and it's wearing uh, some sexy boots and a and a onesie. It looks like and a little seaweed <laughs> cape or a little seaweed shawl. Okay, nice man, nice. And she nice. looks like she hasn't slept very long. And she's you know she's got a chin as well. So she's probably because she mentions that like she's hasn't been mentioned for having a threesome with him, but then everyone else has been offered. So it's pretty obvious that like she wants to fuck, she wants to fuck him, but he doesn't want to fuck her. She's like one of the only people he doesn't want to fuck. 
Well, oh, then there's the this one of the best parts of this episode. Oh, I love this bit so much. Interdimensional uh, TV is that they're my called? favorite episodes too. I want another interdimensional cable episode. This cable, season. they're my favorite. And, and this look at is it. it's a Nintendo wearing a fucking thong. This is brilliant. Giving him a blowjob. Oh, it's so good. It's oh Nintendo. Oh Nintendo. Oh. <laughs> and straight away Jessica's just not into it. <laughs> She's like, wine, let's get the wine, Morty. And then what Morty has to do to try and uh Oh my god. Seduce her ends up pushing her away. Yeah. Cause she becomes a time guard. You fucked it up, oh, yeah. Morty. Yeah. Fuck off, I'm a time guard. Like that's a great line. But that's such an opposite of who she was in the beginning. Like like now. Like she's just this. Uh, yeah, I, I agree and disagree because I feel like she was always that person, but because of what she went through, it just made her more appearing of that person. What, what type of person? Um, Very kind of like cold and selfish in a way. Like she's still, you know, because she's always, whenever Morty's tried to do stuff, she's always yeah, like, good point. you know, being, yeah, like she's always been kind of like that. Oh, this, as soon as this bit happened, I knew exactly what was happening. I knew exactly what was going on. As soon as he walked in? As soon as this thing starts as soon as here? This character, who, yeah, as soon as Hoovy walks in, I, in my brain, I was like, he's going to help him move that through the portal and come back and everyone's going to be dead. Because oh, I, yeah. I, I already knew that that's, yeah. So I already predicted that as soon as I saw that character and loved it. Like his life is going to be majorly screwed up. They make you kind of, oh, what's this but safe? I didn't. <laughs> Go up. Yeah, but I didn't predict. I didn't predict that it would uh, go further than that, though. I thought that, that, that would be like. You mean that they would create a whole world centered around Morty? Yeah, I didn't predict that at all. So, also, yeah. I've seen these characters before. I've seen this. This guy, Mor this who guy, that kind of alien. Yeah, is that the, is that the same alien as the one that uh that they're trying to get remember that episode where they're trying to get one of the characters to a, to a marriage on time yeah that was uh the bird the birds bird persons or maybe wedding i don't know anyway not that it's super relevant to this episode but i think they've used this alien before in a previous episode maybe they have i can't find it yet mm. so just just a nice gesture right just like finally yeah. morty to find somebody who's nice right because you know, Morty's not smart enough to realize that aging wine means that like this guy's gonna age. Like Morty's just, you know, he he does he did he's not smart enough to think about these consequences. Well, I think that even if you have good intentions, like Morty tries to have sometimes, yeah, there's often consequences regardless. Yeah, and I think Rick should know. Like Rick constantly gives Morty this responsibilities without telling him other responsibilities attached to it. Like Rick's just like, oh yeah, Morty will just get the wine. He doesn't think about these things happening. And when they do happen, he just blames Morty for like being Morty and just always getting things wrong. Like Rick doesn't realize that he's he's responsible for them as much as anything else. Right. Uh, absolutely. But that that's mm. that's who Rick is, right? Exactly. That's what draws you in. That's his character. So I didn't notice this. <laughs> yeah, this Summer. He he's just making checking on her like uh and getting the shell. She's just basically killing all his fucking minions. I which did. Is amazing. That's cool. So yeah, I did. I didn't even notice this scene. There you go. It's just a brief second. You turn away for one second, you're gonna miss it. And so you think, all right, Morty's coming in, and he's like, oh, I got the wine. We all good? No, mine. Yeah, he's like, I'm gonna take it, Jessica. Nope. Skulls. He's like, I got one bottle left. Nope. Just and he, he doesn't even drink the whole thing. He drinks like a bit of it and just smashes it against the wall. So then this is the second layer. <laughs> Rory's back in for the second time. <laughs> this, this is, is the sun. This this is when this episode gets really good. Because at the moment, I'm really enjoying this episode. But at this point, I'm just like, okay, it's getting to that level of Rick and Morty that we love. Like the unexpectancy, the the, the, the crazy just like outcomes of stuff that you wouldn't normally imagine. And everybody's ripped. All these Every nemesises and enemies are cut and ripped and jacked. <laughs> right? Uh, Remember the ticket guy? Yeah, man. I remember the ticket dude. Tick guy on the train? Again. <laughs> Jacked, of Maybe. course. What else are you gonna do in this universe besides get jacked if 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 the Rick and Morty wrong you? Oh yeah, one hundred. Plus, you're just surrounded by trees and shit. You're probably just chopping wood every day. Oh, no, there you go. There you go. Now that's practical. Okay, so he's back now. He's mm -hmm. an old man. He beats him up. They never believed him. 
and the, the the fable continues. The fable continues, and everything just keeps developing. Oh, it's so, it's so well done. I think it's interesting because this is how mythology and fables and stories have been transmitted throughout yeah. history. And just think about all the work that goes into animating this episode, because a lot of episodes of animations they keep very similar backgrounds, because the background is a lot of work. Mm. Normally, the, the the huge criteria of work goes in towards the characters and their movements. But this episode, the, the backgrounds is changing constantly all the time, especially color-wise. So it just goes to show how much work and effort went into making this episode. Like a lot of time would have gone into this. Uh, you really got to credit the amazing creative teams behind this. 100, man. And I think this is interesting. This tells something about our society. Why do we guard the gate? Why do we believe in God? Why, <laughs> why does the sun come up? Like we tell stories, like why do people go to hell? We tell stories that have roots from thousands and thousands of years ago. And why? Because one day X, Y, Z mythology, we don't really give reasons. There you go. It's not a, it's not, yeah, exactly. It's an answer, but an answer that you just don't question because that's just the way things are. It's, it's like the, when I was young yeah. and I was getting taught about religion, it's just like, why do we believe in God? Oh, because he's our savior and he did this for us. And then I'm just sitting there going, it's not really an answer, but. I'm fucking like five. What the fuck more am I meant to do? <laughs> and I think that same story that as more layers go on, we forget, they forget why originally they were waiting for this mysterious Morty character. Mm. Oh, poor Morty. He just, he just walks into fucking Jerry. Goddamn Jerry. So. And you see Morty here, he blames Jerry for it, but it was actually his fault. Morty walks into him. Like once again, a very Rick trait. Yeah. Someone else. Great point. Great point. So now this is Morty's last stand. Hold on, Jessica. Let me for the third time, or it's really the fourth time, go back yeah. in here. And now, so you see the crate over there? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you see, it's like, he has no, they've painted him. Look at the, the head, the yeah, silver behind they've been, they've been waiting for him for so long. And, and he's like, he can't even fathom like what's going on. He's just like, man, I just, it's very tunnel vision. And they're just like, we beat him. But then he's like, nah, fuck this. Goes I'm sick of this. Heals them all. And, and this is. This is a very unmorty thing. To yeah, do. typically. Just, he's, you know, but he, he's going through puberty, man. He's with a girl that he has a thing for. Things aren't working out. So his emotions and puberty is taking over and making him making rational decisions. And so, again, here's a reflection of society here. How how many people, how much do we waste our lives on fantasies? Or how much can it help us give us purpose as well? Mm -hmm. Because fantasies and mythologies and stories give people, like, you can work together as a collective unit if you believe in something. And then there's the... Now, this character here, did we see this character as a kid beforehand? Or is this just a random wizard that comes in? In this episode? Yeah. I'd like to know if he was around during the medieval times. In like the like back maybe, of a frame or something? Yeah, like maybe he was the, the king's brother. Because remember how the king, there was three kids? So I'm, I'm like, maybe he was one of the other brothers, but it'd be cool if that was a connection. I don't recall. This is great it. though. He just he just kills his dad and then you just like, I'm, and then the fucking wizard just kills him after training him for so long. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. Why? And then basically he's just mentioning just like, oh, everything was fucking, you know, he just realizes everything's a lie. <laughs> and Morty goes, hey. Yeah, it's it's like after doing everything in my life, if God came down and proved that he was real, I'd be like, oh, fuck. Well, everything I believed was a lie and everything my parents taught me was real. But, you know, that's just, that's just life. You just fucking make your own decisions and believe what you want to believe. You do. We will see if that happens. But in this universe, it's what they're living out. Yeah, yeah. So then Jessica has this epiphany. Maybe we should start over. Morty's like, yes, finally. And then he goes just to get a simple opener. And they're trying to make some contractual agreement between the ocean and Rick. That squid was fucking loving that pen. And it was like, I didn't even notice. (laughs) (laughs) And just the fact that the squid talks back as well. Of course he does. So then, this is kind of the last hurrah for this for these uh, these guys, this species. Oh, 
No, it's not. There's another one after this, bro. Oh, there is? Oh, there you go. That's how many there are. I'm forgetting. That's Yeah, bro. It's it's insane. It just keeps on evolving. So then there's... So you can see they've got his DNA. The last hope. You know, this savior of the species. You are not mm -hmm. ready, son. And he works and works and works. Luke Skywalker style, Darth Vader style. Mm -hmm. And then you see him finally growing older here. I like this. Three of them walk in and they just get disintegrating dead. So he's got like the power of like three of their dead people. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're really advancing in technology. Yeah. And then... But, but do you know how they advance though? Because when Morty walked in before there, he left behind his gauntlets. That's how uh, they progress so quickly. Nice. It's cool. They they leave all the key bits of information to just... Oh my fucking God. That squid got fucked. I never noticed the eye coming out like that. <laughs> nah, how great is that? What, That's how cool is that? That's a great shot. <laughs> and then Mr. Nimbus... I thought Mr. Nimbus was going to was gonna kill this guy, right? Just like with his unlimited power. But no, the unassuming Jessica stabs him with... The, the cool screw for the wine. Yeah. And obviously, and now what's interesting now is like, he sees time, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, you see a heart, the tree is holding. Mm -hmm. It's like the tree of life. I think and it there's represents. A phoenix, and that definitely represents a phoenix, which is like the bird that when it dies, it, it rises again. Like yeah, it's continuous. Very good. So some strong symbology here. Mm -hmm. And, and then Morty he dies and rips and rip Summer back with him. No, you mean um Jessica. <laughs> I like this bit here. It says you just had to touch the ocean. It goes back to the episode of just like, you just had to... Uh... What was it? Yeah, you had to land in the ocean. But that's a similar line in the start of the episode. No, no, but there's another episode where something would happen and Rick would be like, you just had to fucking do that. Or oh. you just had to leave the, leave the ship or something like that. Okay, I get it. It's a callback. Yeah, it's a callback to other episodes. It's basically just... Morty fucking up again. So, Morty's like, he wants to right his wrongs, but then he goes in <laughs> and it's like, what do you make of this scene? That kind of it's, the beginning of time representing? No, no, this to me is like virtual. So, this is pretty much just like them trying to get Morty to give up his arms. So, it's just, they're trying to get him to be, to, to get, get to his emotions, to make him give up. Because they still fear him. They still believe that, because every time Morty's come to them, he's always beaten them. So they're looking for ways to, to break him. And they've never tried to break him this way. Oh yeah, and they become so advanced, so they can do that. Yeah, because 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 now they're not even they're not even existing anymore. They've been wiped out, which you don't find you don't find out until uh Jessica shows what she's done during her whole time. You get to you get to watch when Jessica's talking what happens for them and how they die. Oh, so there you go. He's from Atlantis. There you go. King of Atlantis. <laughs> I just noticed what Rick was doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> da -da -da -da. I think this is a bit of Rick talking to himself. Like, yes, yes. Even in the start of the episode, like his hatred towards Mr. Nimbus. Like, you're embarrassing to me. I don't need you anymore. I, I think that reflects some of the relationship maybe between Rick and Morty and himself. Hmm. I, I, I think so, 100%. <laughs> this is my favorite line of the episode, by the way. <laughs> All I do is eat ass 69 Nintendos, bro, every day. Every day. Bro. Best line of the episode, 100. That and I lick tits. A and this, it's like Mr. Nimbus obviously knows Rick in ways that us as viewers don't. Yeah. He's closer to him more than anyone, I'd say, because Birdman's passed, and that was probably the closest person to him. Andy, I used to fear you respect you. I think Rick is almost believing a version of that because we see the character development change where Rick isn't doesn't have as much of his uh, dominating uh, intelligent prowess where he can just dominate every scenario that comes to him. He's kind of losing yeah. it. And and this, it, you know, if Diane were alive today, referencing potentially his mother. Yep, I think so. And, and maybe that, a lost love, or maybe a lost loved one. True. Oh yeah, very good. And then just being breaking the fourth wall and just being super obvious. Don't establish a canonical backstory with me. Yeah, which is great. Very Rick. I don't know what canonical means though, but I get it. Uh, like Canaan, like something being canonical, I think is like by 
like by law or by by the story like something that's like a huge part of someone's like saying roman mythology maybe i can't yeah i can't think of an example right now <laughs> no people will get us tell us people yeah but, tell us yeah, jungle beast us. people so morty's suspended and then he sees jessica frozen in time but I like how Morty's pretty much just like, what the why the fuck are you doing this? All I wanted was some wine. Like he doesn't realize what he did wrong still. Like he doesn't realize that by killing a bunch of them and by fucking the first character's time, like he doesn't he, he doesn't no, realize. No, it's this. Right. I don't give a shit. It's that. He has that mentality. Like Rick has. Yeah. Yep, exactly. <laughs> why did I clone myself? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> and, and this is him realizing you've got to be an asshole sometimes. Yep. Which you don't, but that's just him realizing, oh, what would Rick do? Rick gets things done. Rick always succeeds. Oh, he's an asshole. So that must be, that's the operating system he's learning and assimilating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they escape. Rick comes, well, they try to escape. Rick, we see, we feel like he's going to save the day. Exactly, exactly. That's what we feel. Like Rick's leaving them. Rick always comes in and saves the day with his hyper intelligence and his hyper advanced technology. That's what we always see. And we're expecting it a little bit. Yes, I was expecting it. And then was... he just get it like, like, oh yeah, technologies, cybernetics. Yeah. And then but the he's... reason they're so much more advanced than him is because, like, one, they have his technology because they stole it and cloned it, and they've had years and years to work on it. So that's that's right. And they strip him. They strip him they naked. They strip him. Right? They strip him completely he's naked. He's vulnerable. So he's vulnerable. Yeah. <laughs> Brother. But he's naked. Like, it's it's symbology as well for, like, stripping away his character. Yep. Like, he's running. That's, n- it's like, we don't see that often from Rick. No. And then, eventually, who comes t- to save? Nimbus. The Nimbus. Mm-hmm. The person who he said all those things about before being useless and he doesn't need him, and he's an excuse and stuff. This is amazing. This is just bang, bang. Summoning just, I love how all I needed to destroy fucking technology was just water and just giant fucking whales with mustaches dropping from the sky. <laughs> this is simple, man. When you control the ocean, why not? You don't need guns. Oh, I wonder if they're the same whales that make the wine out of their bubbles. Oh, I'm sure they are. So, And you can see, you know, this is usually would be Rick standing like this. Yep. But it's not. And then Jessica has like a really interesting epiphany. Yes, time. I had nothing but time, endless time. This is good. This is when you see you see everything. What happens with how they turn into robots? It's it's a really good scene because there they grab her, they decide to freeze her in time, and then she watches them fight each other. They form artificial intelligence, and then that's them dead with the skulls, and artificial intelligence takes over. Really and, well done. And this here, like she's dropping dimes here. She's dropping a bit of knowledge bombs, like. Yeah. Time without purpose is a prison. Hmm. Like, yeah, imagine that. Imagine if we had a, a, a hundred years where there was no purpose to it. We legitimately were just watching. But then you could say, like, is her watching all of this happen? Is that without a purpose or is there a purpose to that? Well, she just she sounded like argue. she was suspended as an observer. Yeah. A- a- and maybe that this is some alluding to, like, Maybe Rick is imprisoned mentally because does he ultimately have a purpose? Is there something he's been fighting for? Something we all fight for in some ways. Mm. Purpose in life to give us meaning and fulfillment. And maybe at the end of the day, once we're all dead and gone in the ground, nothing but silence. Mm -hmm. Maybe. (laughs) But there will be more. So foreshadowing to potential more encounters. I think so. I think this is really good character development for Jessica as well. I agree. That's why this episode is such a good beginning because you get a lot of character development from Morty, Rick, Jessica. Not so much. I guess you could say Summer because she's been a bit more badass. And Jerry, like all the main characters, I feel this character development, but there's also humor. There's also thought provoking uh, things to do with not only life, but things with day to day. Like it's, it's everything you want in a Rick and Morty episode. I agree, man. And I think even more. The, yeah, and I think along the lines we'll get more diversity because obviously there's episodes where they're a bit more dark or a bit more confronting, but 
this one's definitely a good blend of everything I feel like nothing's really overtaking like it's kind of well balanced for a first episode and we we see Nimbus get jacked now this is just very summer because you know summer will be a badass but then she'll just prove that she's still a teenage girl that's you know just does it's very just whimsical and you know, yeah yeah whimsical is a good just goes with it exactly. uh, and so nimbus was about to forgive and you know uh, rick but we see rick's past actions coming to bite him again mm-hmm. without foresight and thinking because he's very mm-hmm. uh, uh sporadic egotistical mm-hmm. he's an ice cold dick killer so good and i, I think it'll be interesting because are they going to start off the next episode with Rick still being in prison or they're just going to move past that? Well, I don't know because we, we saw in, in the last, the end of last season, you remember it was supposed to be the different um, versions of, what's her name? Because there was a space, what's the, what's her name again? Um, Beth. Beth. There was space Beth, alternate universe Beth, and then real Beth. And there was that unknown of like, will we see her again? That's the cliffhanger of the last season. We definitely will. But they didn't touch on it. I'm pretty sure that Beth's a clone and the real Beth is out there being a badass. Maybe. I and like to believe that. I like to believe that Beth's character, instead of being trapped with Jerry and living a kind of normal life where she's not very happy, she's out there being a fucking badass and enjoying herself. I think that's what she'd want to do. Because she looks up to her father. That's what she wants to be, a part of her. Well, we're going to see. Yeah. Uh, but they get what they want in the end. Do they want it though? Uh, well, yeah, good question. Are we doing this because we want this? Or because it's what we are. think the other wants? I think that's exactly what... The, I think they're both doing it because I think the other person wants it. And then they had this and moment. Both... Yeah. <laughs> but then the door opens. Like I think it's pretty clear that their relationship's always going to be disjointed. It's just their characters. Well, at least there's a, there's a more of an awareness now to building oh, bridges of communication and understanding. Yeah, but maybe they'll move past it. They get sucked in. And that's it. That's the that's the episode. That's that, it. That, that's it. That is episode one, season four. Five. Season five. <laughs> Tripping. My bad. I really loved it. I can't wait to see more. Mm. Same, and- man. Look, we'll we'll be doing this uh, pretty much every week now, getting through episode by episode. I feel so. This is something new for us, and we both really enjoy this show, so it's really fun to comment our thoughts on it. Yeah, Jungle Beast doesn't have to be about music. It can be about everything and anything Anything. within the entertainment world. Mm -hmm. So, Also, because I know some of you have asked before. I've seen comments. If you guys want this shirt, link's in the description. Say, 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 dot com. (laughs) Say, 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 you remember that's a Kendrick line. I remember. It's too wise. Say, 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 dot com. Um, other than that, that's it. We're done. Uh, that's it. We'll, we're going to do more different shows eventually. Like put down below if you want us to see if there's any other amazing, incredible uh, shows that, that, that you'd recommend. We'll only do the ones we really love. Just like the music we really love. That's it. I'm Alexander Emanuel Sandalis. You guys catch me everywhere on the internet. And Jungle Beats on Instagram, Facebook, as Thade sucks down this mic. I'm Thade Gray. I'm just... I'm about to fucking make some hot boots. That's that's real, though. That's real, though. That's yeah, not, you're not playing. That's real. Yeah, by Monday, I've got to have a, a two and a half minute track done. And I've got to use, I got to sample something, so I'm going to try and sample some stuff tonight. See That's how I go. Awesome, man. I think one day you should share that with uh, with the community here. I think I'd love to hear it when it's polished. <laughs> In time, but yeah, 100. All right, y'all. Ciao. Thank We're you done. For... Jungle Beats. We done. We we think just fucking Nintendo's bro. 69. <laughs>